And our theme for this week of prayer is the cross. What does cross mean to me? And we will be dwelling on the last words of Jesus from the cross. What does cross mean to me? The cross means love to me. It shows that there is someone who cares for me and loves me to the extent that he came down from heaven, left his royal robe, and he gave his life for me. This is the love that makes me complete. Then cross means grace to me. It shows me that no matter what I have done in the past, my past is sacrificed and nailed to the cross. And I am a new creature in Jesus Christ. I die in him and I am resurrected as a new creature in him. The cross means grace to me. He extended his grace to me so that I may have eternal life. The chains that did bind me with sin have gone away from me. I can rejoice with Paul. Again, I say, rejoice. I have been give, forgiven completely. The cross makes me a new creature, as I said, and my past is sacrificed. I have no burden to carry except the cross of Jesus. Number three, the cross means hope of salvation to me. No matter what I may go through in my life, there may be struggle. I know I will always be victorious. I will always come out victorious in Jesus Christ because the cross shows me that I have, I have someone who will never leave me alone. The cross gives me hope through the blood of Jesus Christ. And this hope keeps me going. This hope keeps me going. Let us bow our heads and pray as we meditate on the words and the word of cross where Jesus was nailed. Loving Father in heaven, this evening we stand before you We want to thank you for the great sacrifice that you have made for us on the cross of Calvary. If it was not the cross, we won't be sitting and standing here. And it is all because of the cross. We ask that you be with us as we meditate on your words. May our Meditate, meditation, and this week as we dwell on your word, may at the end of this prayer meeting, we may be drawn one more step closer to you. So when you come to take us back home, we might be ready to be ushered into your kingdom. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. <coughs> After the chief priest and elders condemned Jesus in the council of Sanhedrin, they sought the approval of the governor, the ruler. The Roman governor at this time was Pontius Pilate. Just imagine for a moment Jesus, handcuffed, standing before Pilate, had bowed in humility. His hands 
that healed the sick by his touch the dead were raised to life now his hands tied there stands the creator of the universe and of you and me before pilate bible declares by the words of his mouth were the heavens made and by the breath of his mouth he spake and it was done he commanded and it stood fast now being mocked the creator stands before a sinner he is accused of being blasphemous the pharisees the scribes determined to get rid of him because he was gathering much crowd about him multitudes followed him and he was an hindrance to their business because he overturned their tables and set their animals and birds free while in the process of cleansing the temple and here now handcuffed stands before pilate a multitude was in the court of pilate crucify him crucify him he is worthy of death that was the claim of the crowd there now the son of god was standing at the mercy of the sinner whom he has created in his own image pilate examined him and he said i find no fault him in, in him i will chastise him and let him go but the crowd was mad and it became very unruly very difficult to control his hands that strained the blood of jesus christ now pilate stands and he says i find no fault in him how can i put this man to death and then the shout comes back he declares himself to be the king of the jews if he is the king and what about cyrus we have no king other than cyrus here stands the savior of the world condemned before the crowd and when jesus was condemned to death i want you to travel with me from the court of pilate to a hill hill call a place called golgotha a place of skulls a place also known as the hill of calvary